Good morning, everybody. My name is Val Zarn. Uh, welcome to the call and thank you for being on time. Uh, direct to the awesome Chris and Lauren Cook, uh, giving you a call from sunny Southern California. And this is the Cook Master Agency new agent call. So really glad you guys are here. Time permitting, I wanna do, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do a complete round robin, but I wanna challenge you to do one of two things. Um, write down at least one takeaway that you can apply today to your business okay in fact i'll challenge you to do both one takeaway that you can apply to your business today uh and a question okay on the things that we cover we're going to cover a lot of ground uh especially if you're new and even if you're not um you know there there should be some things popping up here that uh, should Raise some questions. So love to hear those at the end, time permitting, and uh, be aware or be ready, I may call on you. So uh, put you on the spot there for just a little bit. But uh, okay, so as I mentioned, my name is Val Zarn, director, Chris and Lauren Cook. Um, how I got started with Symmetry. Uh, Chris and I go back now about 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. And I know we shared a little bit on the call yesterday, but uh, Chris and I are the same age, uh, both married, couple kids. And you know, when you meet some certain people, you just kind of connect. Uh, that's how it was with Chris and I. Uh, we were very fortunate to have qualified for a all expense paid carrier trip. Uh, it was actually with Foresters uh, to the Caribbean, uh, to a beautiful place called St. Martin. And that is where we first met. And uh, we were both in with uh, the previous company that a lot of uh, these heavy, heavy hitters came from uh, as Symmetry started and as Symmetry developed. So we made that connection and kept in touch over the years. And I'm so, so glad that he reached out to me about uh, three years ago, almost to the date. It was sometime, I believe in November or maybe late October, uh, said, hey Val, what are you up to bud? <laughs> what are you doing? And are you open uh, to kind of checking things out? Now, having come from the industry and having left the industry with the, with the previous company that had um, how do I put this? Not quite the culture that Symmetry has. It wasn't nearly what, what we got going on here. Uh, doing a very similar type of business. Um, they didn't have any sort of agency owner contract. Um, I saw people get really hurt in that by reshuffling of organizations, which doesn't happen here. Um, so I had left the industry for a reason. And at the time I was uh, had a job. Uh, and the reason why I say it like that is it was literally probably my only real J-O-B that I've ever had. Um, I've always had small businesses or uh, did some sort of outside sales, right, for my entire life. So I, I told myself I'm just completely um, unemployable <laughs> because they, there was the craziest thing. They expected me there at 7.30 every day and uh, they wanted me to stay till 5.30 every day which was uh, very, very foreign to me. And it may or may not be to you, but for me, that was very foreign. It took some getting used to. Uh, so when Chris called me up and said, are you open? I had been there about three years. I knew when I took the job, I wasn't gonna be there more than five. And they had just adjusted our commissions uh, because we were literally making too much more, too much money in their mind based on what average person in my position made. So uh, looked at this, very, very glad I did. I started part-time and then transitioned full-time February 1st, 2018. So come February this next year, it'll be three years full-time. And I was able to replace that income, uh, beyond, go beyond replacing that income within 11 months. And it was about a six-figure income. You know, So I had to take it real seriously as I looked at this transitioning from a job that had benefits and all that kind of stuff. Um, so very good move for me. It's changed my life. Uh, I miss so many important events in my kids' lives. I have two kids that are 17 and age, age 17 and age 14, a boy and a girl. And I miss some significant events while I was at that job because I had to be there. Like they told me when I can take time off. They told me when I can take vacations. And I had this concept of just taking personal time off and hey, just ding my base salary. Like it doesn't exist. Like I didn't even know that that wasn't a thing apparently. So uh, it was very foreign to me. So how it changed my life is I'm way more present, um, even more so now being able to work virtually uh, from home, being able to schedule around important family events, that sort of freedom and flexibility is priceless. Um, I think of all the places that I was able to travel just even just last year, and even this year, 
um, having not only the resources, but the time to do that. I just got back from a six day trip to spend time with Chris and Lauren and some other great people, the Gillums and the bars and all these other great people are part of our organization that live in that area. And it was just so meaningful. And I, I was able to extend that stay for six days and work three of those days and wrote three policies while I was there. And I got to write the whole trip off because it was a business trip. So there's, there's uh, some huge benefits to being able to work virtually now. Um, and the way we're doing things, it just opens up a world of possibility. So that's kind of my quick story as far as how I got started with Symmetry. Um, it's had a huge impact on me personally. It can you if you decide to really take advantage of it and follow the system like we're going to cover today. So uh, let's start with the let's start at the beginning, which is the phones, right? So it's obtaining resources and making lots of act, creating lots of activity. Okay, resources or leads. Uh, leads are what kind of makes this world go around. Um, if you're brand brand new. Um, Something, a quick mention here that I don't think I've put nearly enough focus on in my agency or talk about enough, and I've definitely talked about a lot more lately, is don't be a secret agent, right? Let people just know what you do. Um, I promise you, you will write four or five policies, and you can do that in the span of maybe a week or two at the most if you're literally just talking to people. It's not about bugging everybody that you know, but letting them know that what you do. I'll tell a quick story. My best friend's uncle had passed away. And I heard that they were struggling to just scrape together the money for the funeral. And guess what? I never talked to him. I never offered it to him. Um, now, had I at some point over the years said, hey, this is what I do. Can I help you? Can we look at, let's just look at what it costs and you tell me if it makes sense. Um, and I could have written a $30, $40 a month policy that just completely avoided that, that issue. So don't be a secret agent because I felt bad. Um, nobody gave me a hard time about it. Nobody said, why didn't you talk to us? Nobody, but I personally felt bad. So that's a great way to create some immediate activity, some immediate volume, some immediate resources as far as monetary resources. So then you can buy the actual resources to make our business, make the whole machine work, which is leads. Um, if you're not taking leads, you're not gonna be able to produce consistently. That's all there is to it. Um, it takes resources, okay? So you get the resources, you get on the phone, and what happens, like, why do people not make it on the phone? Well, first of all, the phones is first is step number one. So with any job, if you think about it, day one, that's the hardest thing. Like you're learning where everything is, lunchroom and the bathroom and people's names and all that kind of stuff, the basic fundamentals of what it is that you're doing. And the same thing here. So why is it the hardest part? I'm not sure, like aside from it being the first thing that we do. So reasons why people don't make it on the phone is they just don't dial enough, okay? This is, this is a game of activity. So in the beginning, you're gonna get paid for your hustle, right? That's it. That's the only way you get paid is for your hustle because your skill set's not there yet, okay? Um, if you have previous experience, your learning curve is gonna be very, very quick. If you have none, um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, uh, a little bit more activity, I should say, not necessarily longer. So 25 to 35 dials an hour. Um, $35 an hour is really kind of a really solid metric as far as how many you should be making. So how do we track that? It's basically you pick up the phone and hit the little green button, you make a tick mark, okay? They don't pick up. You hit the red button <laughs> and then you hit the green button again and they don't pick up. That's another dial. So I wanted to specify that too because some people say, oh, I got to make as a part-timer $250 to $500 a week. And as a full-timer, 500 to 1,000 hours a week, how do I do that when I only have 50 leads or whatever, right? It's easy because you're triple dialing. And yes, it is okay. And I'm saying this half jokingly, right? It is okay to call the lead more than once. <laughs> so the average lead has one or two phone numbers on there. So if you figure between 50 leads, that's 75 potential numbers. If you're triple dialing, that's 225 dials in one session, that's potential. Okay, now you're going to be talking to people and of course that affects that, but uh, keeping track of that like it doesn't have to be fancy symmetry has a nice tracking sheet. Um, you can literally use just a piece of paper and it goes like this one, two, three, four, five. Right, and then you can just see and count like dials contacts and appointments dials is every time you hit the little green button contacts is every, anytime anyone picks up the phone. Um, and really some people split hairs, like what if it's a wrong number? Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just if someone picks up the phone, mark a contact, 
and then obviously if you set an appointment, do a hash mark for that as well. Um, so that is basically the activity side of things. And then stick to the phone script, just stick to it. Do not vary from it. Um, this business is all about mastering the mundane, mastering the mundane. And what we learned recently in a book, in one of our books is that, you know, it's easy to do and it's easy not to do. Okay. So what we do from a physical standpoint, couldn't be easier. Can it be mentally challenging? Sure. But if you remove the emotion from the whole process, it's not mentally challenging. It's not. If you focus just on the activity, you fall in love with the activity, they say, and the results will follow. So does that mean that you may have to make a thousand dials before you set an appointment? I have a question for you. What if it did mean that? What if it meant you had to make a thousand dials before you set your first appointment? And then fast forward a couple of months and you're the number one producer in the whole country. We have a guy that did that, right? Uh, Sean Kim did that. Uh, we have Chris Cook, who started in this industry, made something like 670 dials um, before he got any sort of uh, result. Um, Grant Reynolds was was a professed terrible was professed that he ter was terrible at this, right? Uh, Elijah Carujo was terrible at this um, in the very very beginning. He was able to work past that. So I can't emphasize that enough, especially if you're just brand new starting, to just master the mundane. The, the results will follow, I promise, they will, um, if you simply stick with it. So it's, it's basically massive action. And the second part of that equation that makes the whole thing work is constant correction. Because doing something over and over and over again the wrong way is going to not only produce the exact same result, but it's gonna create a habit. So you need to make sure that you're making those course corrections. Um, if you're one degree off on the way to the moon, you end up something like 5,300 miles in outer space, okay? So, and another thing I read to you in the first uh, mission to the moon, that the ship was off course about 95% of the time. So what does that mean? It was just these tiny, tiny, tiny little course corrections being constantly made to reach the destination. And that's, that's, the, that's true here too. It may be one word, one tone, one in, like uh, inflection in your voice, could be the smallest of things because within that first seven seconds, people are going to decide whether they want to talk to you or not. Um, if you're getting a lot of hangups or, or rude people, um, you're probably not talking low enough or slow enough. Uh, they probably perceive you as a telemarketer. So on the top of every script that you have, uh, I would handwrite uh, in like a Sharpie, <laughs> low and slow, okay? Low and slow. Um, so mastering that mundane activity is going to be the key to success here, quite frankly. And realizing that you can't get upset. You can't get upset for the results you're not getting for the work you didn't do, right? You just have, you got to put in the work to get the result. And in the beginning, it may be really hard. Uh, if you come with a lot of phone experience, a lot of sales experience, it may come easy to you. But guess what? You've already paid that price. Everybody's got to pay the price at some point. Um, you may come to Symmetry having paid part of that price, all of that price, or none of that price. Elijah Carew had paid some of that price. He had no prior sales experience, but he was familiar with the phones. He worked at the call center, but it wasn't sales. So it's quite different when you have an incoming call. Um, so he was comfortable on the phones, but I don't really think that that necessarily applies to what, what it is that we do. So resources are absolutely the key, and it's fresh resources are the key. So you need to really be getting leads every single week, counsel with the person, your key leader, your mentor, your person that's growing, person that you see on the leaderboards to what that should look like for you. Um, but you should be getting a 500% return on your investment. So if you're only investing $50 a week in leads and you're doing this properly, you can really only expect to make, to net out about 250 bucks, right? $250. Now, if, if that works for you, that's great. Then we have a solid plan that's working, right? But if you look at that 500% return, uh, net return, so you basically take the amount of leads that you're taking, multiply that number as far as dollars go by five, that should be your net income. So if your 50 leads times five is $250 net income, uh, $200 a week times five is $1,000 net income after expenses. So you backed out your lead expense and you're left with $1,000. So what the great thing here is that you can completely fund your business 
uh, the insurance companies can, can completely fund your business uh, in the form of your commissions because you get paid directly. Uh, you get to write off all of these wonderful expenses that you have, including leads, and they're funding your business if you're doing it right. Uh, leads should not cost you anything. Um, I haven't paid for a lead since the second or third week I started because I'm just taking it out of the commissions that I'm earning, right? So this is a business. And the I think probably the most uh, poignant way to kind of parallel this is if you own a print shop, let's say you own a brick and mortar print shop and you've invested the hundreds of thousands of dollars into all of this equipment. And let's just say you're given all of that, right? You're given the building, you're given the $200,000 print press or whatever the heck it is, right? You have all that, that stuff. You still got to buy ink and you still got to buy paper, okay? So our ink and paper are our leads, right? And the great thing is that this business can be run with an overall expense of 20% or less. And if you compare that really to any other business that's scalable, that is a very small number. And what I mean by scalable is if you want to make $2,500 a week, just written net income, you can do that. We have quite a few people on our team that are doing that. Um, guess what it takes? What's 2,500 divided by five? 500 bucks, okay? So don't expect a $2,500 a week income without that, the resources to support that, right? Don't expect to make, to sell a big print job if you don't buy enough ink and paper and you won't be able to fulfill it, right? You won't. It's that simple. I mean, it's just the raw resources of what it is that we do. So covered a couple of key tips already. Uh, triple dial. So what that means is you call the number. Here's what I do. I ca you call the number and the lead says Jonathan and Mary Smith. You call the number, nobody answers. The voicemail goes, hi, you've reached John. Leave a message. I'll call you back. Okay. So I know now that that's John. I know two things that that's John's phone number, not Mary's. And I know he goes by John, not Jonathan. Okay. So I'm making a note, John, right? Uh, so when I, when I call back, so I let it ring, go to the voicemail. For me, I leave about two seconds of dead air. I don't leave a voicemail, it doesn't work. They don't call you back. Um, so I leave two seconds of dead air. What does that do? It notifies them that they have a voicemail and a missed call, okay? And then I hang up. I really don't wait, like maybe I wait a second, but I'll call back again. I'll just hit redial. And for that call, I let it ring three to four times at the most. If they're gonna pick up, they're probably gonna pick up on the third or fourth dial. And then I hang up and then I dial it again, okay? Now, why do we do that? Picture this, um, can't see everyone on the phone, but I want you to think about this. If you are on the call here, if you receive a number from, a phone call from a number you don't recognize, do you pick it up? I'll personally answer that question, no, I don't. And most people don't, okay? If you get, if you get an immediate callback uh, from another number, you might think about it, right? Uh, you might pick it up. And then the third time you're like, this has got to be important, right? If you have kids, you might be thinking, where are my kids? <laughs> are they okay, right? That's sort of those sort of thought processes. And I've tracked this a bunch of times and 50% of my appointments come from the second or third dial. So if you're not triple dialing, you're really missing out. Um, and then when, if they are legitimately away from their phone, they're going to see three missed calls and a voicemail. And most people don't even check their voicemail. They're just gonna call you right back. And, and I get a lot of callbacks from that. Uh, so expect to get some callbacks. Um, if you're able to rifle through your leads, figure out what phone number is calling you so you're prepared when they call you back. So that's a tip too. So if you don't have the lead in front of you and someone's calling you, you don't know who's calling you, don't answer it. Because you have, uh, your only credibility is the fact that you have that information in front of you, their name, address, loan amount, um, gosh, their date of birth, that kind of stuff, depending on what type of lead you have. So that's your only credibility and you lose that if you pick up the phone and, and someone says, I missed a call from this number. Oh, hold on just a second. I think I did give you a call. Hold on, hold on. You're like, well, what is this about? And then you just lose all credibility. So that would be my suggestion on that. Um, when to dial um, there. Okay, back to that as far as uh, triple dialing. So that would count as one, two, three, just to clarify. Okay, so that's three dials on one phone number. If they didn't pick up, it takes, including all of that, I don't know, a minute and a half maybe, right? So when to dial, there is no bad time to dial. Um, you could say that there are better times to dial, but, but what you have to be careful there is if you only have certain hours that you can dial, 
dial at those times just because there's kind of higher like peak times like in the morning like before 11 or after five or saturday mornings those are kind of ideal times for the long those are kind of maybe peak times but for a very long time and i'm in the process of shifting this i used to do most of my dials in the afternoon when most people say that that's the worst time to dial <laughs> okay <laughs> now i have a couple of people on the team that are kicking my butt right now which is awesome i love it um because i want to work hard strive to be number one and then have someone you know no one wants to get beat but as far as chasing someone i love that as far as the friendly competition so uh so keep that in mind anyways that's that's a good way to do it but when you when you dial book within 24 hours so if you're dialing in the morning set it up for the same day if you can right so if you're dialing in the morning do a same day appointment uh, later that afternoon or evening so what works better for you afternoons or evenings or what time will you be home from work that sort of thing um, or set for the very next day at the latest okay so booking within 24 hours is super critical tracking your numbers is super critical how do you know that you make 35 dollars an hour right simple just with your tracking sheet you could even put a little time stamp on there and uh see where you're at at the, at the top of the hour bottom of the hour whatever just keep track of that um, knowing your numbers is super important so as you start out and you and you find out that you need to make 100 dials before you set an appointment that's fine right starting somewhere so how many dials do you need to make to set eight appointments, if that's your goal, as far as part time, right? 800 dials. So as you keep track of that, and then the next week you go, oh, look at this, I'm making one appointment for every 75 dials. I'm making one appointment for every 50 dials. I'm making one appointment for every 25 dials, right? And as you work your way up through your skill set and you start working newer leads and eventually get on A leads, which you really should be targeting getting on those as quickly as possible, but you do have to qualify for it. You have to show production, you have to show consistency, but with those, gosh, it's like one out of every 10 dials, or something like that, or less. Okay, you see these crazy numbers posted on group me, like 25, five and four, you know, those sort of things. Um, pretty clear they're either experts on the phone or maybe calling a mix of A leads and, and bonus leads, okay? Um, not Don't book appointments during conference call times. So this kind of ties into, yeah, let's talk about that real quick. So four keys of a successful week are, are uh, resources, activity, system, and schedule. So resources are your leads. We talked about that and the conversion rates, expectations on that. Activity, um, if you're part-time, I would say your goal is to make $500 in a week. And let me run some quick math here, and I'm just going to do it again uh, just because. So 500 divided by 35 is 14 hours, okay, divided by... Yep, 14 hours. So if you look at it from a part time standpoint, 14 hours is obviously falls in that category of part time, right? For just the dials. So 500 dials can be done in 14 hours. Um, full time, if your goal should be 800 to 1000. So even if you look at the number of hours that that takes to do that, you're still well within that. Yes, there's other things to do. But, but make sure that when you're counting the time that you're working to count your times that you are dialing, running appointments, and showing the plan, okay? Sharing the opportunity as far as a recruiting standpoint. Those are the things that we need to be realistic with our time. Those are the actual hours that we work with in a day. Now we need, that's working in your business. Now working on your business is a separate thing. You should be working on your business during like off hours, okay? Working on your business is listening to the MP3s. It's um, setting up your email signature. <laughs> it's stuff like that, right? That we can, you know, we can fool ourselves and tell that we're so busy doing things, but it's just busy work. It's the proverbial uh, shuffling, you know, or straightening your desk, right? Shuffling papers on your desk. So, so that's what I would say. Um, so resources, uh, activity, we talked about that, activity levels. Uh, system, plugging into the system that talks about conference calls, reading the book of the month, all of those things, you need to be doing those things. Um, and then schedule, having that those sort of activities on your schedule uh, to make sure that they get done. And if you see your, your schedule on a Wednesday morning and someone's available at 10 o'clock Pacific, let's say, I know that that's during a national call. Say, so, you know what, I could do a nine o'clock or I can do a 12 o'clock. Which one of those will work better for you? I have a meeting that I'm gonna be in during that time. And people respect that, okay? Just don't do it because best case scenario, you write a couple policies, uh, 
with the appointment. But if you miss that call, you might miss a way figuring out how to make two more policies a week, write two more policies a week, right? So which is more valuable, writing two more policies once or two more policies every single week. So, and I always learn things from that call and you'll hear it time and time again, successful people within our business do not miss those calls. And they're not on those calls because they're successful. They're successful because they're on the calls. Okay, so it's a mindset. It's uh, like walking, you know, you don't wanna be the first one through a minefield, right? Like that's just silly. Why are we gonna innovate our path through a minefield? Right. I'm going to step exactly where everybody else stepped because we know it works. We know it doesn't work. And that's just the system. Right. This is what works. This is the paint by numbers. If you don't pay attention to the numbers and what color you're putting in those little spaces, it's not going to be a very pretty picture. OK, <laughs> literally just paint by numbers. So uh, role playing uh, as far as initially getting started, that's important. Uh, handling objections. There's a managing phone objection script, uh, which is super, super helpful. Um, here's a tip that I would say, get the recorder on your phone, on whatever device you have, and grab that managing phone objection script and read the first one. Just read the, the first objection and leave like maybe 20 seconds of just dead air. Okay. Just clock it. And then read the second one. Leave 20 seconds of dead air read the third one and so forth, right? Now, what are you gonna do with this recording? You play it back to yourself at first with the script right in front of you and you practice what you're gonna say when a client says exactly that. Because the funny thing is we have our script, what we say, and the clients have their script and they stick to it. <laughs> their script, most a lot of times is the managing phone objections. I promise you, you know, if you're getting an objection, at least 90% of the time, it is verbatim what's on that script. So if you practice over and over and over and over again, um, it'll just come out second nature because it's, it's about mastering the mundane. It's about transferring confidence, right? The, the client's never going to be more confident in you than you are in yourself. The client's never going to be more comfortable with the process and the phone call than you are. It just doesn't happen. So how do you get that way? Well, there's a couple of different ways. It's practicing. And then it's also just diving into the pool, right? What you don't want to get, you do not want to get is a degree in a classroom on how to swim. Because, you know, you, you, you pass the tassel, you get your diploma, you're standing by the pool deck on the, on the edge of the pool with your degree on how to swim. And they say, okay, now it's time to execute. You jump in that pool and you drown right? Because it doesn't matter that you got a degree on how to swim and you know all the strokes and fluid dynamics and all that kind of stuff, you still don't know how to swim, right? Until you get in the pool. So this business is a little bit of ready, fire, aim, ready, fire, aim. And that's very intentional, right? It's very intentional because you learn very quickly. Um, what do I do on an appointment? Well, guess what? It, it take this the right way because yes, you want to prep, but you don't need to know what to do on an appointment until you have an appointment. Right. Are we going to prep? Yes, we're going to prep. But let's keep the main thing, the main thing, which is getting really, really good and comfortable on that phone and then become a master, uh, become an expert one appointment at a time. Right. And we'll go in a little bit here. We'll segue into as far as what to write and when. And I think that's something also that a lot of new agents do is overcomplicate that. It, it can be very, very, very simple as far as what to write and when. So having your conference calls on the schedule. Um, scheduling your appointments around those is going to be absolutely key. Practicing the objections. Lead budget, we talked about that. Um, sort of an ideal starting lead budget, and you can ramp up to this, okay? So don't be scared by this number, and it really has to translate to what your goal is. It may be less, it may be more, but a good number is $250 a week, okay? So $250 a week should net you out about $1,200 a week in income net, okay? So that may or may not be your goal. You may not want to make that much money or desire to. You may want to make a lot more than that. That's okay. Remember, it's all scalable, but the key is, and here's, here's a pitfall that I see a lot, is as you're resolving those leads, if you're not calling them enough, you're going to have a lot of leads that you simply never talk to. So let's say you have 40 leads, just whatever different lead types, right? Your first week. And you've only made 
200, 250 dials. So out of those 40, you've maybe resolved half of them. You've set a few appointments, you got a bunch of no's, and half of them you've never reached, okay? So let's, using that analogy, you have 20 leads left. The next week, the system says buy more leads, okay? So you buy more leads, right? Now you have 40 and you put in that same limited amount of activity. You set a couple of appointments, you resolve only half of them, half of them you've never even talked to. Resolving is getting a yes or a no, okay? getting an appointment or just getting a no, right? Either way, it's fine. You wanna resolve these leads. So at the end of the second week, now you have 40 leads, okay? And you've only written a couple of policies. Keep in mind, you're, you're working, what is that? Eight hours a week? That's it. That's all you've been working because you're only making about 250 dials. In fact, it would be seven hours a week. So you're very, putting very little activity as far as actual dials. The third week, you get more leads, same thing. Maybe you've written one policy, you're, you one or two policies, you're just not putting in enough activity. Now you have 60 leads that are unresolved, you never talked to. And then what happens is they're like, I'm not making a lot of money and I got 60 leads here. I'm not gonna buy leads this week. I'm gonna resolve these, okay? So you've kind of created this, this situation yourself by not resolving the leads within the very first week. And by not resolving the leads in the very first week, um, it's affecting your profitability. Because once expenses are met, the rest is profit. So let's say you know, your expense is $250 a week and you just write one small policy, right? And your commission's only 250 bucks. You're like, I broke even, all right? So that's, you gotta start somewhere, right? But now let's compare that to writing two policies, just one more. That second one is 100% profit. Your expenses didn't go up at all. Okay, we're not paying more for the minutes on our cell phone like when I got my first cell phone, <laughs> which tells you it was a long time ago. <laughs> so yeah, so you've met, you've met your expenses, the rest is profit. So you can actually double, triple your profit margin without double, tri tripling your activity or resources. Okay, so that's really the key is to uh, be super, super busy and active on the phone and getting up to, I would say whether you're part-time or full-time, 500 should be like the minimum threshold as far as dials go. Um, and if you're full-time beyond that, especially in the very, very beginning, resolving all leads, getting a yes or no, um, rem remembering to constantly correct what you're doing. Every five contacts you get in the very beginning, at least you should be contacting the person who's working with you as far as your mentor, every five contacts. Um, Part-time, your goal should be eight sits, not eight appointments set. We know we're gonna have to set more than eight to get eight sits. Full-time should be 15, uh, which in reality is gonna take about 20 appointments set or more to actually sit with 15, depending on how well we are tying down those appointments. Um, set goals. Uh, one of those goals should be activity-based in the very, very beginning. So whether you're part-time or full-time, 500 is a great number. Uh, counsel with your upline, they may be telling you a lot more. If it's full-time, it should be more. Um, but I think that is a great goal. Um, the mind will not focus until it has clear objectives. So when you can see, like for me, I just have uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I just put a bunch of boxes. I like to check the boxes and then I can visualize. Uh, my spreadsheet shows like 25 across. So I know every row is 25. If I filled four rows, I can just easily see that I've made 100 dials without counting tally marks or whatever. So, um, and that's similar to how the symmetry activity sheet. So I'd recommend you do that. Counsel with your up and do what they're doing as far as recommending tracking activity. So the purpose of a goal is to give you direction, not to identify a final destination. So how that ties in is focusing on that activity and then the results will follow. So just because you made a hundred dials, didn't set an appointment, doesn't mean that there wasn't uh, forward movement. Okay, uh, and it's possible to do so little activity that there never becomes forward movement. And the analogy that I, that I love to use is a steam locomotive. So picture that you're in the engine room or whatever they call that. There's coal, big stack of coal behind you and there's the furnace in front of you. Okay, so you're in there, it's hot, it's dusty, whatever. This is your environment, this is your work environment, right? So you grab a you shovel of coal, you toss it in the furnace, it's burning, it's building heat, which eventually will create steam, which will eventually will move the locomotive. So you put one, one shovel in there, right? And then you wait a while. And then, you know, maybe later on that day, you just put one more shovel. And uh, the next day you kind of ramp up your activity and now you put three shovels full in there. Well, this can be, you know, if you equate that to like dials and activity, what happens is that it, 
the furnace, the, the boiler, and maybe someone on here knows a whole lot more about that than I do. It's just an analogy. So doesn't have a chance to really create enough heat to create steam to get that going. And let's say it takes 500 scoops of coal to get it, to get it going. You can put 500 scoops of coal over a week and the train still not be moving, right? Versus putting 500 scoops of coal over in the course of a day and you're trucking, right? And that is what momentum is all about. Um, momentum, momentum is difficult to create, okay? And it's a whole lot easier to sustain. Uh, so basically when that train's moving, you can get away with just occasionally shoveling, shoveling, shoveling. Uh, but once you stop doing that, the temperature starts to go down and the train starts to slow down. And then you gotta work harder. So all the hard work you work towards to get that momentum, that movement um, can be lost much more quickly than it was gained, okay? So keeping that in mind as far as consistent activity and keeping that activity level way up. And you see it time and time again on GroupMe, people succeeding, it's like this person just started and then you don't see a whole lot of activity. And then, gosh, even for like, like Dustin came out of the board, okay, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. When you came out, you're like rocking it, right? And then you kind of plateaued with the new way that we're doing things. And then like all of a sudden recently, it's like, whoa, you know, you're getting some great activity because you've created that momentum. You've put in that uncomfortable uh, hard work of just shoveling, shoveling, shoveling. Think about this. You're sweaty. You're covered in coal dust. You're just a mess, right? That's what it feels like. And that's what it can feel like, right? It's not comfortable. Um, everything we want is outside of our comfort zone. So if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable uh, with some of the things I'm talking about, good, because that's giving you a clear indication that you're moving in the right direction, right? That that's what you need to do. So um, it needs to be close enough to be achieved. The goal needs to be close enough to be achieved. So is $500 in a week doable? Yeah. I mean, it takes 14 hours to do it. Is it going to be easy? No, it's just work though, right? I mean, it's the, it's the job. Um, and, you know, I would attest too for me personally, that's the hardest part of the job. Like if I have a full calendar, I'm not going to miss an appointment. I simply run the appointment. I love talking to people, right? So, and meeting with people. Um, and you just gain that love for helping people and realize that they requested information and you're just sorting, right? Especially if you're calling bonus leads, you're just sorting. Be a professional sorter, right? You're not trying to convince people that this is important to them. You're trying to find the people that this is important to them, right? So, and it has to be helpful enough to change life. So if we talk about getting enough done in a short period of, short period of time, we're talking about helping families and helping yours. Because if we help enough families out there, we're gonna get paid handsomely for that. Um, there's a few audios that I would suggest. Uh, one of them is an absolute classic by Ashley Tarr. This is recommended on every call, <laughs> right? Because it's so good. Uh, working older leads. Now, if you go to the Symmetry website, and if you don't have access to that, we can email it to you or your mentor can email it to you. You go to Symmetry Training, click on the tab, and they actually scroll down. Uh, you'll find it there. You have, you have to find it. It's in that first section, I think, under Agent Training. Um, it's called Working Older Leads. I believe it's on that first page. So it's an MP3 that you can listen to. Um, that's really great for the phone. There is a couple of other ones that just absolutely stood out to me. Um, they were Monday training calls. So same SFG website training, uh, scroll down to where it says Monday sales training. Uh, there was two really great ones. They're all really great, but these particular ones stood out from June 2nd, June 2nd and June 8th. Okay, uh, solidify the needs, eliminate objections was one of them. And my notes only show who did the second one. It was Cicely Newsom and Tim Penso. I don't remember what the name of that one was, but just look it up under Monday training under the date. Um, on those, just a quick note, I think they were started the recording early. So you might have to skip like the first 10 minutes. <laughs> You'll figure it out real quick because there's just pretty much dead air there. But, uh, but make sure you get to that recording, listen to those they are just phenomenal. Uh, product progression, what does that mean? What to write when? Who do you start with? Gosh, we have almost 40 carriers. Uh, a lot of them have a dozen products. We literally have access to hundreds of products. So how do you boil or plate this down? Um, we recommend now that you start with American Amicable, uh, which is one of the first contracts you get even before you get access to your Symmetry website, they send out these four contracts, right? And American Amicable is one of them. Um, they have a product called Home Certainty. 
uh, very liberal underwriting, very simple product to understand. It's your basic mortgage term product, okay? They issue very quickly and they pay very quickly. Um, it's the only company that I know of that will pay you in the afternoon on the same day uh, that a commission is released, which is insane. I have no idea how they do that. So we have a lot of great carriers that pay very quickly. You get a commission statement one day, you get paid the next day. That's great. Uh, what if it's on a Friday, right? Even with next day pay, if, it if you get a statement on a Friday, that means you're waiting three days, right? Or two days, depending on how you look at that. With AMM, you can get an email that a policy issued in the morning and the commissions are released that afternoon, which is just, I have no idea how they do that. So that could happen on a Friday, you get paid on Friday, right? And do what, do what you will. I'm just kidding. <laughs> on a Friday, Friday uh, night or, or weekend. But no, that's pretty cool that they pay really, really fast. So AMM, uh, that's our acronym or our abbreviation for them, is American Amicable uh, Home Certainty Mortgage Term goes up to like age 75, it goes up to like 300,000. So it's got a really high maximum age and a relatively high uh, maximum amount of coverage. If they don't qualify for that, uh, American Amical has a product called Dignity Solutions and that's a whole life plan, okay? It's gonna be have more liberal underwriting. So if they don't qualify for home certainty, it's a good chance to qualify for Dignity Solutions. So get familiar with those two products first and foremost. Um, the third product is Mutual of Omaha. They have a guaranteed product, uh, which is called Guaranteed Advantage. And if you look at their literature, the AD is capitalized and that stands for accidental death, okay? So Guaranteed Advantage, um, no underwriting, just make sure you fill out the application properly that thing issues in about two days, uh, you get paid in about three. So it uh, takes a couple of days to get paid on that one, but it's still very fast and they issue all the time. Uh, so there's no underwriting, love those. Um, great addition to any of the policies uh, that I've already mentioned. Uh, so really with the husband and wife, uh, your goal should always to be at least right for policies. Um, so basic, you know, your home certainty plus maybe a guaranteed advantage or your Dignity Solutions plus a guaranteed advantage on each of them, okay? So that would be four policies. You need to propose that like kind of as a package. I don't wanna get into the tra sales training there, but uh, propose it as a package and say this doubles if you die in an accident, that kind of thing. And it really helps with application count, persistency, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the last one I wanna cover real quick is Mutual of Omaha Children's Whole Life. Um, this can issue up to age 17. And um, they have policies that start at $4 a month, okay? For a whole life policy for a child. Um, the application is like two pages. There's like two health questions that they, they have to be able to answer. Grandparents can write it. Uh, you don't need a ton of information. Uh, don't need the kid's social. It's just a date of birth. Um, really super easy to write. Uh, not a ton of commission um, because it's just such a small policy, but that's not the point. We're, the more policies you have in a home, the greater your persistency is. In other words, the more likely that's just going to stay on the books for a very long time. And the more that they consider you their agent. So we should be proposing all that. So basically, if you have a family of five, if you think about this, a family of five and they have so three kids and they're younger kids, um, the goal should be one, two, three, seven policies, right? You should be proposing set and, and you know, ideally writing seven policies. And if you talk about what uh, there's something called care ratio, where they look at the number of A leads, only A leads count, um, to the number of applications that you're writing, uh, this is going to really help out with your personal care ratio and your team's care ratio and our entire group's care ratio. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Super easy product to write. Um, let's see here. Transitioning here in the last few minutes, um, recruiting. Uh, I, I'll tell you personally that I'm so glad that Chris thought enough of me to call me. Um, we're not looking to uh, motivate anyone to do something different. Uh, we're just looking for motivated people. It's just a simple call. Hey, man, what you doing? You know, are you happy with that? Are you open to maybe doing something on the side, and make make some extra money? You know, some sort of approach like that. Just a really soft touch. But you never know. 
who you might come up with. On the tenth person on Grant's list was Elijah, um, the tenth person, <laughs> right? So it wasn't one of the first nine. Uh, so you never know how you can impact someone else's life and how much they're just going to want to just hug you and thank you that you did, right? Because I thank Chris all the time that he thought enough of me to call me. So it's made a huge impact on my life. It can on yours and it can on people that you, you know, but we're not looking to convince them of anything. If they're open, great. If they're not, that's okay, right? If they're happy with what they're doing, it's not our job to sell them on the idea of symmetry. Uh, but what's the value of basically hiring one person? Like aside from you know having that impact on their them and their family, like let's say it's a it's a family guy and he wants more time with his kids. You have the opportunity to present something to him where he can have more time with his kids. He can increase his money, increase his lifestyle uh, by doing what it is that we do. And we shouldn't you know let's not be secret agents. Let's share that. Um, cold market recruiting. A lot of us use ZipRecruiter. Um, it's very effective, people apply for the position. Um, it is also a sorting process, much like bonus leads, right? We're not looking to motivate people, we're looking for motivated people, just gotta find the right people. And you have to ask yourself, is this someone I want would wanna work with? That's like my biggest question. Like if, if the conversation, the interview is kind of awkward and strained and they're just asking like weird questions and you don't have a good vibe, why would you, you know, this is like, <laughs> Forgive the analogy, like this is the dating process, right? Like they're not, they don't communicate well. They're awkward, whatever. It's like, why would you want to marry that person, right? Don't, you know, just find the right people that you're comfortable with working and that you'd, you'd have fun working with. Um, building helps in a big, big way as far as income. It can level out uh, as far as what your income looks like. If you look at this, let's say you've been here four months and you recruited a couple of people and you're doing a good amount of volume. It doesn't take a whole lot to get up to an 80% contract. It is basically first two months is 2,500, like two and a half policies issued. That's it for two months in a row. Now you're at a 75%. The next promotion is basically five policies issued in a month for two months. Now you're at an 80% contract. So basically every application that you're writing, you're getting paid a hundred dollars more. You think about it. Average application is a thousand. You're getting paid ten percent more. That's a hundred bucks, right? So you've earned that eighty percent uh, promotion. So what does that look like if you hire somebody that's and and you have like let's it's called a spread. So you're at a seventy, they're at an eighty, right? Or you're at an eighty, they're at a seventy. Excuse me. Um, what does that look like? There, with that, if they're producing let's say ten thousand dollars a month, right? What's ten percent of ten thousand? thousand dollars. Think about which ones of your bills add up to a thousand dollars. Imagine having that bill taken care of before you even get out of bed, right? I would guess that that would cover <clears throat> not most people's mortgages, maybe depending on where you're at in the country, but uh, your car payment and probably all of your other bills, right? Aside from your house for most people. So as far as developing a team, the insurance companies pay you on volume. That's what we get paid on. When we do personal volume, they pay us a whole lot more. When we create group volume, they pay us, um, you know, smaller amount, but we do get paid directly from the insurance company. It doesn't come out of their commissions. The insurance companies are paying us and they are, they've they they've uh, attained the commission level that they've earned, right? And in no way can you inhibit them from, from growing and creating, you know, getting promotions and creating more volume for themselves. So, um, so hopefully keep that in mind. It's, it has a huge impact. Let me just share, share with you that. It can have a huge impact on leveling out your income, creating emotional stability, right? <laughs> as far as that's concerned. Um, nine months is probably the, the first nine months is gonna be the hardest. So this is beyond your first 30 days. There's benchmarks, 30 days and then a 90 day mark, right? So 30 days is when you're really just getting past that learning curve, starting to make money, that sort of thing. Uh, when you hit that 90 day mark, now you have some level of proficiency as what you're, in what you're doing. By that point, hopefully you're, you're working a mix of A leads and uh, bonus leads. And what you're gonna find is you're making more money in less time. Now you have the opportunity to continue to work uh, at the number of hours that you were working before and just increase that level of income. Because what happens is we, don't, we get better, we don't get worse. Uh, it gets easier, it doesn't get harder. 
So every day, every phone call is, is progress, right? A millimeter of progress is progress. This is how Danny Young puts it. A millimeter of progress is progress unless it's in 10 different directions, okay? So every phone call is moving you towards the right, the right direction as long as you're doing the constant correction part of that. So anyways, the first nine months is also a benchmark because what happens is uh, the way that we get paid on our policies is they're advancing us nine months of income. So they're paying us as if the client has paid for nine months. Well, what happens to that other 25%? The great thing is that we get that. So if you think about it for just a moment, if the clients are paying on the 10th, 11th, and 12th month, it, uh, let's say, for example, on a $1,000 policy, right? That's going to base, let's say, let, let me put it this way. If you're putting $10,000 in business in per month, right? What's going to happen is on the 10th month, if you run the math, you're going to get an extra 500 bucks in commission, okay? Because uh, that's just how it works out. And then the 11th month, it's going to be like rolling. So that's going to be an extra $1,000 that's just coming in from business that you did almost a year ago. And then the 12th month, it's going to go up to about $1,500. If you run the numbers, that's how it works out. Uh, $1,500 a month, that's going to be coming in. It's a roll out of bed money, right? From business that you did earlier in the year. And that's only at $10,000. Now, imagine if you're writing $20,000 a month, like a lot of us are, right? $20,000 a month, that's three grand a month that's coming in, you know, when that first year rolls around before you even get started. And guess what? That can pay your entire lead bill. So if you're doing it right after a year, gosh, your leads can be 100% funded just from your residual commissions or your rolling commissions, okay? So hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, you know, let me know. I can maybe ask the question at the end here. Uh, okay, so a couple of things here in the last few minutes and I'm gonna open it up for some call, some questions. Uh, SimplySFG.com, SimplySFG.com is a great resource for telesales and tips. Uh, there's a PowerPoint you can download. Um, so there's tons of audio training that you can dive into. So with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, should be able to individually unmute yourself. We'll start with anybody that has any questions just right off the tip of their tongues. I asked you to write down one takeaway uh, that you can apply today to your business and one question. So if anybody uh, wants to go first, go for it. Otherwise, uh, you've been warned. <laughs> uh, Greg, we'll let you go. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully I get the text side. You have to unmute there. There we go. I think we got you, Greg. Hi there. Um, so you. I have a few questions, if that's all right. I'll go as quickly uh, as I can. Yes, we'll go through them quickly. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what constitutes an A lead? Okay, excellent. So an A lead is a brand new fresh lead that just came in. Like these are not like aged in any way. An A lead can be from, if it's an internet lead, it could be the exact same day that it was generated. Um, it's a brand new lead that's never been distributed before is what that is. A What's bonus What's the maximum lead, amount of time an A lead can be um, since they filled out the form? I think once it hits five weeks, it becomes a five A lead, even if it's not distributed. But what I find is they're nowhere near that old. Um, so depending on what area you're working, basically if you look and see what the inventory looks like, if there's little or no inventory in your area, you can ask your mentor as far as how to view that on opt. But if there's little or no inventory, you're getting leads that were mailed in this previous week or that called okay. in this previous week. And they're, they're usually very, very fresh. So after how much activity can I access them? I remember you saying that at first you can't, you can't get A leads. Yeah, there's an actual guideline to that. And I think the guideline says four or five applications. Um, it's okay. really just demonstrating, you could be on A leads your second week. You could. Right. Okay, if you've demonstrated that you're, you're putting in the activity, you're plugged into the calls, it's more of a um, overall picture than it is like a hard and fast guideline. Because when you start creating A leads within a team or an, a team starts to distribute A leads within this group, uh, there's an accountability to that. There has to be an accountability to that uh, because the expectation, there's something called a care ratio, which I talked about briefly. Um, and it has to do with the relationship of A leads to number of applications. A leads to number of applications. Sure. So let's say you had 10 A leads and you only wrote two of them, but you picked up four applications. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you only wrote two of the 10, but you picked up four applications. The applications are what counts towards your care ratio. 
So in that example, you have a 40% care ratio. The minimum expectation or requirement really is 30%. Okay. Does that answer okay. your question? How much? Yeah, absolutely. How much do they cost? Is there a set amount for A leads or do they vary? There is. And if you look at the promotion guidelines uh, within your SFG handbook, um, if you don't really know what you're looking at, you can easily miss it. But look at that uh, promotion guideline. If you look in there, it'll say a dollar amount. I think an A lead for a new agent is 32 bucks, something like that. It'll say 32 MP. It'll say like 20 CI, whatever, for a call in lead. There's different lead types. Okay? okay. So a direct mail A lead is about $32. And just to kind of put that in perspective for symmetry, depending on where you're at in the country, that could cost between $70 and $100 to create it. So this is a big, this is a very, very important point. Why they're, why they limit those resources to people that have demonstrated that they can actually work them and convert them. Okay. Because you say, wow, $30, $32 is a lot. Uh, it is and isn't right. Depends on what kind of money you're getting back from that. But keeping in mind that that is only about half of what symmetry has paid for that lead to create it. So for every A lead that you're taking, they have a lot of investment in you as an agent. Uh, and the only way that symmetry makes money is when policies are written. Thank you, Dustin. Look at that. Do you I love having a co-host. I'm sorry? Do you personally buy a lot of A leads yourself? I do. Yeah. And you'll find that um, pretty much all the top producers are doing at least a mix of A leads, but for sure they're taking some A leads, like almost unilaterally. That's, that's a pretty fair statement. Um, because okay. the amount of basically you're buying your time back, like your investment cost is higher, but what's it worth to be able to make, you know, 10 dials and make an appointment versus making a hundred dollars and make an appointment, right? It yeah. takes a whole lot longer to make a hundred dials. So what's more valuable, $1 or one minute? Well, I promise you one minute is way more valuable than $1. Make yeah. sense? So you're buying yeah, time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, when you're, um, when you're dialing, when you do the triple dial thing, do you mm -hmm. ever use a different phone number or is it always the same phone number? Well, I mean, yeah, you, I just use the same phone number. Uh, I think there's some value to seeing this number over and over and over again. Um, yeah. You could get a Google voice number for basically free and try different numbers. There's our power dialer, which is amazing. You can, for an extra five bucks or whatever, you can get another phone number or two or three different mindsets on that. Some people say, oh no, call from the same number so they can see it's the same person. They can get that sense of urgency. So I think that's more of a detail type thing. More important than any of that is just doing a lot of phone calls. So absolute great questions, Greg. In fact, we'll hang afterwards a little bit uh, if you have yeah, no more questions, because I want to make sure we're answering all the of questions, course. but we'll pause real quick if you don't mind, and then uh, yeah. see if anybody else, any other questions. Very good questions though. You can either raise your hand or ask to unmute yourself or whatever the case may be. And if no one else does, we'll come right back to you, Greg, and we'll wrap up here in a couple of minutes. I have a question. Yes. With uh, the 50 cent leads, or mm -hmm. any lead for that matter, can you tell if anybody else has called before that, or did they take it out of the system when you purchase them? Well, it's taken out of the system when an application is written. Okay. So yeah, it's taken out of the system when the application is written. If you're calling a 50 cent lead, for sure somebody's called them. If you're, you know, if you're calling an A lead, someone from another company might have called them. <laughs> right. But they are exclusive to you for whatever period of time that the agent handbook says. Um, I, I have agents that love 50 cent leads, like just realizing they just embrace the fact that, hey, I got to make at least $500 to set five appointments, that kind of thing. And just embracing that because your cost, your your client acquisition cost is actually a lot lower on a 50 cent lead. So let's say it takes you 150 cent leads, right? To to write one application. That's $50, right? That's 50 bucks. And it's actually not even that bad. So let's say it takes 50, 50 cent leads. That's only $25. So it costs you 25 bucks to acquire that client and a whole bunch of dials. But let's say it takes three A leads to, to acquire a client. Not a whole lot of work, but now your investment is close to hundred bucks for your client acquisition cost versus 25 for 50 cents. Does that make sense? Yes. With the A lead, it's a whole lot less time and more money with the bonus leads. It's more time and less money. Okay. So great questions. We got 901. I'm going to uh, keep it open here for another minute or two. So if there's any other questions and Greg, I'll hang out for a couple of minutes afterwards. It seems like you got some other questions. 
speaking of leads, uh, is there any cold leads? Is there any cold leads? Yeah, like cold calling people, you know, not an actual leads that's our A leads or anything. Uh, we don't generate those. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we don't generate just lists. Um, like a 50 cent lead is going to be between, gosh, one and three or four years old, something like that. They're going to be really old. Uh, might feel like cold calling, but they requested information. So this is the type of person that you know owns a home, you know their address, you know their phone number, um, you know at some point they were concerned about protecting their home and their family, right? So that 50 cent lead, or we even have 25 cent leads. Um, I was just wondering opinions. if there's, if there's any uh, way like we can introduce to new people our what what our company provides or, or whatnot, you know? Introduce to new people what our company provides. Um, yeah, I would just say if you're on a super tight budget, like you either have time or you have money. Very few people have an abundance of both, right? So when you start out, uh, you're, you're gonna have more, you may have more time than money. So just pick up 150 cent leads. Gotcha. Go to work. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's, yeah. If you, and if you literally don't even have $50, like you don't be a secret agent. You have a license to print money. Like go talk to somebody, right? right? How many yeah. contacts you have in your phone? Like, I think I have 2000 contacts on my phone. I don't know how to look at it. Last time I looked, it was over 1,500 and I looked, haven't looked in a long time. So yeah, I mean, how many people, well, a lot of those are clients or whatever, but um, you know, start there. Hey, Joe, how you doing? I, we have been talking a while, how are things going? Blah, 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 how's the family? Da, da, da. Hey, just let you know, I got my insurance license. If you ever need any help, let me know. Or hey, yeah. when's the last time you looked at your life insurance? Or whatever, right? Depending on the relationship. If it's your best friend, say, hey, uh, I just got started, a new I got started in a new job. I need to practice, I'm coming over. What's it about? Don't worry about it. I'm coming over. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. It all depends on the relationship, right? Right. right? right. You're not going to do that to somebody yeah. you haven't talked to in five years. But Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So good question. All right. We are at 9.04. So um, appreciate everybody being on the call. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down for now. Feel free to hang out. Um, if you have any last minute questions, I'll hang out for maybe another five minutes or so. And um, then we shall shut it all the way down. But thank you all for joining me. That will officially conclude the call. If you got a bounce, thanks for being on the call and very nice spending time with you. Take care.